is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. I've got two hot tablets right here, both 10 inch form factor size. We have the new iPad, we have the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1. Which of these is better for you? We're going to find out now. So here we have the new iPad and the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1. Both of these start at $499. For that you get Wi-Fi only tablets with 16 gigs of internal storage. There is no 3G or 4G version of the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1, at least not yet. Will there be in the future? Who knows? Uh, chances seem pretty good, but don't know what's going on with that. Obviously with the iPad line, we've got 3G, 4G versions of that available as well for additional money. So for those of you who go away from Wi-Fi hotspots, don't have a mobile hotspot feature on your phone uh, or some sort of internet connection sharing feature, that may be very important to you, so keep that in mind. Other big difference? Obviously we've got iOS running here on the Apple tablet, and we have Android running on the Galaxy. This is Android OS 4.0 ice cream sandwich running here. It will get Jelly Bean, we don't know when. But uh, as always, when you pick a tablet, I want you to try out both operating systems and see which you like better, which you're more comfortable with. If you're already an iPhone person and you just don't like Android, obviously, well, you're going to probably go with that iPad, aren't you? But if you want to try more than one operating system, say you do it on an iPhone already, but you're, you want to mix and match and get the best of both worlds, then that certainly works. And likewise, if you're an Android person all the way, well, you're probably going to go for that Android operating system. Nothing much has changed in Apple land ever since the original iPhone came out, and the iPad shares that UI. So what you've got here is a grid of icons. That's your application launcher there. Everything you install will show up there, and you can sweep between screens to see all your apps that are installed. You've got your little launcher dock down here. You can customize which apps are down there for quick access so you don't have to keep swiping through a whole lot of screens. If you want to get to settings, you keep swiping around until you get to your settings icon and change your settings, or you can put your settings icon down here for quick access. With Android, we have a desktop, something like a PC in a way, and you can throw your widgets here and your icons. I've got my weather report there. I have my calendar to tell me what's up and what I need to work on next. So a little bit more of a computery kind of feel for those of you who are looking for something that's something about a laptop substitute, for example. If you want to get to your settings on Android, you tap there, and then Samsung has customized it to put a lot of things right at your fingertips here for your wireless radio, screen rotation, brightness, and then access to even more settings. So, different ways of doing the same thing. And if you want to get to your applications, tap on that little grid symbol there, and then here are all your apps, not unlike the iPad. So that's for you beginners who aren't too familiar with those things. Both of these are very fast tablets with very capable graphics and very good for gaming. Uh, as I always say, for, for the iPad, you're going to find a bigger selection of games. Android's really been catching up lately, and there's a nice selection of high-quality games out there for your moderate gamer to your casual gamer. I think there's enough titles to keep you busy, but for those of you who can chew through three or four games a week, iPad's probably a better choice for titles. Now, uh, one thing to keep in mind, though, is controlling the game. You're going to be using on-screen controls on the iPad. That's the way it is. With Android, you can use on-screen controls for the game, but you can also use external game controllers. You can use a Bluetooth game controller, or you can use one of these wired ones right here. This is the Xbox PC wired USB controller, and you need a little adapter for the Samsung. This is the one that Samsung makes. connects to the docking port at the bottom right here, so you can plug in USB peripherals. And there's third-party ones, like this guy here, which was only $5.99 at the local store does the same thing. So that kind of ups the ante a little bit for gaming, especially if you're doing some action 3D gaming because you can use this kind of stuff to play the game with. Also, when it comes to USB, one nice thing is you can actually use keyboards, mice that are connected via USB. You can also use Bluetooth keyboards and mice. With the iPad, no USB peripherals of that sort. You can use Bluetooth, however, keyboards if you want. You can also use flash drives with the Samsung, which is pretty handy, and even external hard drives, formatted FAT32 or XFAT file system, that's going to work. So again, that makes it more computer-like, more expandable. And while we're talking about expandable, the Samsung has a micro SD card slot. It's up top here, and you can watch our full review of this product to learn all about all the ports and stuff on here, the little door that covers it up, and you can use up to a 64 gig SDXC card, which we actually have in this, and it's working just fine. With the iPad, you know how it is. With Apple, there is no removable storage card thing going on there. So no SD cards. No, What you got is what it came built with. So if you buy the 16 gig, you have 16 gigs. If you buy the 32, you've got 32 and so on. 
So if you do get an iPad, make sure that you get one that has ample enough storage. And for those of you who like to play games, today's 3D games are often one gig each. So that's a lot of space they can take up. And also if you like to put a lot of iTunes movie on there, especially HD quality, uh, movies can certainly run a gig easily. TV shows 500 megs. So need that space. In terms of performance, they're both very zippy. Everybody knows the iPad is a very responsive product and also, generally speaking, very stable. I mean, some applications, yeah, they might not be so stable that you download from uh, the application store, but in general, very stable tablet. Samsung here has a very fast tablet as well. It's one of the fastest Android tablets on the market. It has the Exynos quad-core CPU. Those of you who are into Android products know that Samsung's Exynos CPU is very fast. And you've got Mali 400 graphics there. so. They hold their own in terms of performance, and I found that the Galaxy Note 10.1 is very stable, too. Much more stable, say, than the ASUS Transformer line of tablets that tend to have little slowdown error messages and hiccups and crashes every so often. Samsung really does a very good job of queuing, and queuing their software. And this is very complicated software for Android, too. Whereas usually Android is pretty much like the iPad. You launch an application, it's going to take up your full screen. I'll show you what I mean. And now we've got Pulse Newsreader, a really nice, very graphically rich newsreader running about, filling up the entire screen. Your standard tablet experience. But with Samsung, they have this kind of neat multitasking thing going on. First of all, you can have floating applications, and these are the applications that are floatable, including your note-taking application, the music player, you've got a little email window, calculator, that kind of thing. So say you want to bring up a calculator. You've got that, you can move this around right here. Say you want to take a note. Launch S note, and you can start taking notes right there. So, more complex software than we've ever seen on a mobile OS tablet before. And also, they have the side by side multitasking feature. And again, you can learn about all of that in our full review, but I'll show you right now. We've got our web browser up right here, and there's a little multi screen symbol, and I can use that. And I can actually say launch gallery or S note or the video player side by side. That's giving me a little tip and telling me about how that works. And then syncing up my little notes. So I can take notes while I'm looking at a web page, for example. So again, it's pretty impressive that it's pretty stable and pretty fast given the stuff that you can do with that. That really sets it apart from the iPad. Well, people might be making jokes right now about Samsung copying Apple. With this product here, they're really learning how to come into their own and do their own kinds of software and experience. And the other thing that sets it apart is the S Pen. This is a Wacom Active Digital Pen. You get a little sound effect when you take it out, and it can automatically open up a launcher for pen-friendly applications right here, or you can have it just launch a particular pen-friendly app. Wacom Digitizer plus a touchscreen Active Pen, much like those of you who've used Windows tablet PCs. Uh, you have pressure sensitivity up to 1,024 levels right here. Much more precise drawing, much smaller tip than you'll see on a capacitive stylus. So, really excellent, much more like actually taking notes on paper when you've got something that has a thin tip and that is pressure sensitive. And if you like to draw and paint, well, it makes the world a difference. It's just about impossible to really draw well with a capacitive stylus. It's sort of like finger painting. So, again, a unique feature sets it apart. Now, goodness knows there are a lot of capacitive styli on the market, and these guys work with a little organic tip that's just like your, the flesh of your finger in terms of conductance, and that's why they work. And you can see, you can get them in skinny tip. This is about the skinniest tip you're going to find, and in bigger, fatter tips. They're rubbery, and these work with both Android and with the iPad, but I'll show you the difference in what drawing is like. So now we have Alias Sketchbook running on both of these. This is the pro version on Android because that gives us pressure sensitivity. Not even an option, of course, with the iPad because there is no pre pressure sensitive digitizer. And we've got our digital pen here, and I'm going to do some light drawing and then heavy drawing to get a fatter line. Very light. So again, that, that's just much more like drawing. And when you write, it's also much more like writing. Now with the iPad, it tells you to use your finger because, well, it doesn't have an active digitizer. We can do that. And here's a capacitive stylus. And here's our fatter capacitive stylus. No matter what size capacitive stylus you're using, you see pretty much you're going to get the same width of line. There's no pressure sensitivity here. So for those of you who are wondering what's the big deal, what's the difference between using the two, a capacitive stylus and an actual active digitizer pen, there's the difference.
How about multimedia consumption? You know, that's where the iPad's going to win. That iTunes e ecosystem is just simply huge. A lot of people are out there using it. Great selection of uh, videos, music, that kind of thing. Not that you can't get a wide variety of, of videos and music on an Android tablet, but like I said, a lot of people are already invested in iTunes heavily, and it's pretty easy to either use iCloud to sync to download your purchases from iTunes directly onto the tablet or sync them over USB to the tablet. So here we're looking at the music player on both of these. This happens to be Samsung's music player. There's also Google Music. Uh, they have different UIs. Obviously, they do mostly the same thing. I like Samsung's a little bit better. And the difference between the speakers is you've got two front-facing stereo speakers on the Samsung, and you have a mono speaker on the iPad. Now, the iPad speaker isn't bad for a mono speaker, and it's pretty loud. We'll test out our track so you can hear it. We're a little over half volume right now, so not bad. It is a tablet, don't expect it to be super thick. And now we'll try a song here. Different kind of tune, obviously. Volume's about the same on both of these, they're both pretty loud. Sounds a little richer and fuller on the Samsung, though, thanks to those stereo speakers, and you can get separation going if you're watching a movie. So how about video playback? Both of these guys are very capable. This is Samsung's video player. Again, you can use the built-in Android gallery application or Samsung's, and Samsung's is pretty cool. They give you clear labels about what your files are, and each of these videos is actually animating. So it's like it's playing in a small window. And here we have the, the kind of more simple approach from Apple for their video. We've got movie trailer right there showing. And both of them honestly play very well. One thing to keep in mind, though, if you're going to be watching videos is 4 by 3 aspect ratio on the iPad, which is particularly comfortable for looking at PDFs and reading books, but for, for both current TV shows and for movies that tend to be in widescreen format, you're going to be looking at a bigger area of black bars. This guy has a 1200 by 800 resolution, 16 by 10 aspect ratio display, so you're going to be looking at something with less letterboxing. We'll take a look and see how it looks. So there's our black bars, but it looks certainly nice. Very beautiful display on the new iPad. And we'll check out demo video from Samsung here. You can see it almost fills the screen, so... A little hard to tell in video, but we're getting a nice separation surround sound thing going from one speaker to the other. So less black bars, more movie you're actually looking at. But there's more to all this than just the aspect ratio. Clearly, one place that the iPad really pulls ahead, the new iPad, is its retina display. Much, much higher resolution versus the Samsung. Now, there are 1920 by 1200 Android tablets out there. A couple of them are Acer Iconia A700, the Transformer Infinity TF700. This guy has your standard 1280 by 800 resolution display. The new iPad has a resolution of 2048 by 1536, so you're getting a little, lot more pixels there. Uh, and does it look really, really sharp and, and nice? Yes, it does. Uh, depending how good your eyes are, you'll really notice the difference. For those of you who are 20, 20 years old and you have good vision, you'll probably really, really notice the difference. You won't see any little teeny, jaggy edges to fonts, that kind of thing. And if your your eyes aren't that young or that good, you'll still notice that things just look a little sharper, a little clearer. They really pop. Now, the Samsung's display is actually a very nice PLS display, which is Samsung's answer to IPS. It's sharp, it's clear, it has good contrast, it has good colors, but in terms of if you want the best of the best of the sharpest, it's going to pop more on the iPad. Now that also translates into sharper fonts, and we have a review of the new iPad on the iPad from our website, Mobile Tech Review. We have the Galaxy Note 10 Point Run review up here. And honestly, both of them are very sharp and readable, but the iPad goes that little extra bit for ultra sharpness. Given the different aspect ratios, you can see you get a little bit more height when you're viewing a web page over here. Both are responsive enough. Quick devices, both of them. Not seeing any checker boxing or anything like that on the display. Of course, now this one gets to be more complicated, but you get the possibility of using Adobe Flash with Android tablets. Now, 
Adobe has said they're not going to further develop mobile Flash, so that means that if you look on the, the Google Play Store and you have a brand new, fresh account that you haven't downloaded Flash on before, it won't show up by default anymore. That happened August 15th. However, if you use the web browser on your computer and go to play.google.com, it still will show up if you search for Flash, Adobe Flash Player, and you can log in there and then send it to your device. So, still, we have the advantage of Flash Player on Android. It might be a little harder to get it now, but it's there. And it works just fine. Both of these can do HTML5 video, and that means you've got very capable YouTube players that play HTML5 format video, and that's just perfectly fine. It looks very good, and it's actually more efficient on mobile processors, so no complaints about using HTML5 video when it's available. Challenge is there is still a lot of W Flash out there. Both of these guys can do streaming video, like Netflix as well, uh, other streaming services. You cannot use Amazon Prime Video on the iPad because it doesn't have Adobe Flash. You can push an Android tablet to do that. Uh, the controls might not be super responsive compared to using a Flash Player on your desktop, but it does work. Now, one other special and nifty thing that Samsung did is their little sort of picture-in-a-picture -picture style video player feature, something that's also on the Galaxy S3. So we're watching our video right here, but we want to keep watching it in a little window. And here it is still playing on my desktop, and I can resize that and drag that around. And you can have this running on top of any application, which is pretty neat. I can just pinch zoom it right there, and the playing is still fluid. It's really pretty neat. We'd love to see Apple start innovating again a little bit more and bring in some features like this. Now how about book reading? Granted, you probably won't want to read Landscape. You can if you want to. Though. This is iBooks over here, this is Google Play Books. Both of these support Nook, Kindle, you name it. All the, the bookstores are available on both of these. And you can see pretty much the same presentation here. Good speed on page turns. Pretty enough looking. A more practical page view, you can do the same thing with the iPad, turn it on its side. So here you have it. Very readable, very sharp looking. iPad definitely gets the edge. I think a 4 by 3 aspect ratio is a little bit more comfortable for reading. Here you feel like you're reading one long, narrow column of text. I mean, it's not that bad, but this is just a more book-like size. Also, the sharpness of the text, well, it is going to be better on the iPad. And given the POS display, that tends to have a little bit of a purpley white for the background. And the iPad gets a little bit closer to pure white. There's also still a little bit of a magenta purple tinge there. But give that point to the iPad. The Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1 takes a little lead again for having a built-in consumer IR remote. There's a little IR port up top right here. And that's just like the IR blaster on your TV remote. And that means, well, you can actually control your AV gear, your receiver, your cable box, and your TV. It comes with peel which is a very uh, content-oriented kind of remote control, so it gives you a feature of some of the hottest things that things are on right now. Uh, Peel is also available for the iPad, by the way. But with the iPad, you're going to have to buy a third-party IR emitter to add on to it to do the same thing, and then you're, you're back at pretty much even level. So I chalk up a little bit one for Samsung there. You don't have to go and buy any extras. Both of these guys have front-facing video chat cameras. Uh, pretty good quality on both of them, and they have Rear cameras, 5 megapixel, and both, you know, they're tablet cameras, but they're not bad. They're pretty decent. You can take some nice shots with it. You can shoot some decent video. You can shoot higher resolution video with the iPad, however. In terms of other operating system differences with Android, as you probably know by now, you have access to the file system. It actually comes with Samsung's file manager, so it makes it easier to copy things on and off SD cards, flash drives, that kind of thing. With the iPad, they really gear it towards either cloud management of, of the files that are on the device or using iTunes on the desktop with the USB cable to get things on and off. So kind of less computery. Again, iPad more geared towards really rocking content consumption. Android, a bit more of your content creation plus consumption, kind of your computer stand-in. When it comes to build quality and looks, well, the iPad is a little bit thicker, a little bit heavier because the new iPad actually got a little thicker and heavier than the iPad too. Always a gorgeous design from Apple. Nice looking piece of consumer electronics. Curved back right there. A little bit thicker, I don't mind, compared to the iPad too, because there's a little bit more to grip on. Nice metal back. Certainly looks and feels like a high quality product. The Samsung is just like the iPads available in black or in white, but they've quite changed the design from the original Galaxy Tab 10.1 to make sure it doesn't well, look like the iPad. So you've got the bezel fairly prominent around the front here, and like I said, it's either white or actually gray, sorry, that this is available in. 
So you get a white bezel, you get a gray bezel, and very thin, 1.3 pounds, thinner than the iPad as well, but still pretty comfortable to hold. They've squared off the edges enough that there's something to grip onto. It doesn't taper to a really fine point like the Transformer Prime tablet. And you look on the back and you have Samsung plastic. There it is. They do plastic. We know they do plastic. Shiny white. It's actually kind of a nice looking tablet though, despite that. And uh, despite what some people have said, this thing does not creak. I am squeezing the hell out of it. It is plastic. If you press really hard, you'll get a little flex, but it's put together very well. Excellent build quality. Still, it is plastic. And if you get the silver one, it's kind of like a faux brush metal finish. So I give points certainly to the iPad for looking more chic and having metal versus Samsung's plastics. Samsung gains a little back by being lighter and thinner. In terms of battery life, the, the iPads have been Energizer bunnies, but the new iPad, since it has a whole lot more backlighting going on for the high resolution display, the battery life is actually not going up anymore compared to, say, the iPad 2. Um, in real world use, we get about eight and a half hours out of it. That's with mixed productivity, watching some videos, that kind of thing. And we get the same from the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1. So that's the new iPad versus the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1. Again, both start at $4.99. Both are available now. And as always, when comparing the iPad to an Android tablet, the big difference is it, the iPad, awesome for media consumption, just a pleasure to use. Very easy, very simple. If you're computer phobic, if you don't want to mess with stuff too much, just plug it into your computer, transfer some content, and you're there. Android, a little bit more complicated to use maybe, also a little bit more open in terms of customization, your desktops, you can change the look and feel of it. More of a computer stand and access to SD cards, flash drives, that kind of stuff. And a little bit geared more towards content creation. For example, this comes with Polaris Office, an MS compatible suite built in because they figure you probably are kind of using this as a laptop standard. Now you can download Office suites for the iPad as well, but none comes built in. Just a viewer there. They're both lovely tablets. I have to say, on features, Samsung has really done a great job with this guy. Between the pen, for those of you who are into note-taking, drawing, uh, marking up PDFs, doing digital signatures on documents, really rocking there. The multitasking is definitely a step into the future for where tablets should be going and hopefully are going. The, the video player, picture-in-a-picture effect, also very neat. So a lot of stuff going on here. The AV remote that's built in, you get a lot more features, really, versus the iPad. What you lose is the access to the huge selection of iPad apps in the iTunes App Store. Uh, now, Android has all the staples covered. You've got Evernote, you've got Skitch, you've got Office Suites, you've got your Netflix, all that kind of thing. But still not as many apps as there are out there for the iPad, and particularly not as many games. So which do you go for? Well, base your decision on the features and which are more important to you. Ease of use, huge, app, huge application selection, particularly games, versus the pen, the video player feature, the AV remote, those kind of things in the Samsung. That's assuming that you're comfortable with both operating systems. If you want something that's just really turnkey, really fast, very easy to use, the iPad still is going to win. If you want something more of a computer replacement, the Samsung pulls ahead. Which, personally, have I picked to be my tablet? Well, Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1 for me. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review of both of these excellent tablets, and do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.